I'm Marty Stauffer. Jackson, Wyoming is a thriving community nestled at the foot of the Grand Tetons. It's also home to the largest concentration of elk in North America. The name elk actually belongs to the European animal which we call moose. Whatever you call them, Elk are magnificent. And so is Jackson Hole. As a result, the human population here has continued to grow. Much of the land which was once elk wintering range has been converted to ranches and housing developments. Today, humans are trying to strike a balance with the wild herds. Let's take a look at the sometimes controversial situation in the Valley of the Elk. The haunting call of bugling elk once rang across North America. They were the most widely distributed member of the deer family, about 10 million strong in the 1700s. As civilization spread westward, the great herds were exterminated. By the 1900s, 99% had vanished. Fortunately, some herds which lived in rugged mountains survived. When laws were passed to protect them and their habitat, they prospered once again. Today, elk roam the high country of most of our western states. Our story is centered around the Jackson Hole Herd, which summers in Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks and in surrounding national forest and wilderness areas. Cool water may feel good on a hot afternoon, but wallowing is also an important part of mating behavior. Apparently, the coating of mud and urine makes the bull more attractive to the cows. The scent, combined with the size of his antlers, signal his age and fitness to cows and to competing bulls.
As autumn days grow shorter and colder, the rut gathers speed. The largest, healthiest bulls are usually the most successful at gathering females into harems. Young bulls remain on the outskirts and will steal cows when given the opportunity. There is growing concern that hunting is reducing the number of large bulls in some areas, leaving only immature animals for mating. Given the choice, receptive cows will reject smaller bulls and actually initiate mating with a larger bull. When snow becomes deep in the high country, most of the elk begin their annual migration to the National Elk Refuge. As settlers moved into Jackson Hole, elk lost much of their former winter range. They were forced to raid the rancher's haystacks or die. As it turned out, they did plenty of both. Ranchers were invaded by thousands of starving elk. Publicity of the disaster led to the creation of the refuge. Some of Jackson's early residents had predicted that without the refuge, the entire valley would be settled. And they were right. Today, a wire fence is all that separates the growing community from the great herds. By the time snow blankets the valley floor, part of the herd has already reached the refuge. Some elk travel more than 100 miles, crossing mountain passes and icy rivers, following almost exactly the same path from year to year. These elk have not only survived the migration, but have escaped waiting hunters as well. Elk quickly learn which areas are open to hunting and which areas are not. Once past the hunters, they relax and go about the business of uncovering their food. Those still migrating face a less certain future. Elk hunting permits are distributed by lottery for the National Elk Refuge as well as Grand Teton National Park. Our goal is to take about 400 elk on the National Elk Refuge this, this fall. In order to do that, the best way to take elk is to take antlerless only because you're getting two, a cow and a calf. So that helps bring down the overall herd numbers, and that's what we're trying to do in the management goals for the refuge through the Game and Fish Department. Okay, everyone should be holding a ticket. Drawings are held weekly for two months. There are always at least several hopeful hunters for each available permit. As we 
Over the course of the season, as many as 2,000 permits are issued. The lucky winners pay a regular license fee. And naturally, as with all hunting licenses, the money goes to work for further management. Which day, sir? Hunt areas and even hunting times are strictly regulated and controlled. Most of our national parks do not allow sport hunting. Grand Teton is an exception. Controversy has surrounded the hunt since it was authorized in 1950. Each year, an average of 600 elk are killed within the park. The hunters are licensed by the state of Wyoming and deputized as rangers by the Secretary of Interior. Critics feel the hunt is unfair, unsportsmanlike, and unnecessary. Wildlife managers contend that without hunting, the herd would quickly overpopulate, leading to range damage, disease, and starvation. It's a complex issue with no apparent solution. For most hunters, the motivation is food. An adult elk will fill a freezer with up to 400 pounds of meat. That's more than enough for the hungriest family. Even so, death is never pretty, especially when the animal in the crosshairs is as beautiful as an elk. Much of the opposition to the hunt is actually based on this emotion. But unless we buy back the entire valley from ranchers and homeowners and then reintroduce packs of wolves, the hunt must continue. Each year, the herd increases by about 20%, so hunting must remove 20% to keep the herd size stable. However, the elk seldom cooperate. They are learning to bypass the hunt areas and to migrate primarily at night. Howdy. Howdy. You got your license and your refuse permit? All right, thank you. Thank you. Here's your, you can just keep this with you when you're transporting it. You don't have the National it. Elk Refuge has a goal of 7,500 wintering elk, but they have been unable to reduce the herd to this level for several years. Ironically, some individuals must be killed to benefit the herd.
majority of the elk find their way to the refuge, but invariably, some are attracted to ranchers' haystacks. Housing developments, fences and roads contribute to the problem by blocking historic migration routes. More than half of the herd's former winter range is no longer available. Most ranchers are understanding and don't mind forking off a little extra hay. But hay is expensive and in some years in limited supply. In addition, the threat of disease transmission worries both ranchers and wildlife biologists. Many of the elk carry brucellosis, which can kill unborn elk and cattle. Whether or not the disease can be passed between the two is uncertain, but the possibility is cause for concern. Each year, the problem grows as more and more people move into the valley. Fortunately, almost all of the elk find their way to the National Elk Refuge, where they're welcome. In early winter, the elk graze on grasses in the nearly 25,000 acre refuge. However, when this food becomes buried beneath the snow, their diet is supplemented with compressed alfalfa pellets. Each elk receives about eight pounds of pellets per day. It costs $50 to feed a single elk through the winter. That's nearly half a million dollars for the entire herd. Even feeding the elk is not without controversy. Opponents claim it's unnatural to concentrate elk on the feed lines. Cows and calves often become separated and any disease spreads quickly. Yet, the alternative to supplemental feeding is increased movement of elk onto ranch lands where they're not welcome. And finally, mass starvation. And so we have another complex problem with no apparent solution. Up to 100 coyotes also live on the refuge, and they survive the winter as scavengers. Coyotes rarely hunt healthy elk. This calf has become separated from the herd, yet it's strong enough to fend off the attack. The coyotes must wait for the calf to grow weaker. Though their meal may be several days away, they will not risk injury from the sharp hooves. Before humans settled in Jackson Hole, winter weather and predators kept elk numbers in check. The current feeding program has eliminated large-scale die-offs, and predators such as wolves and mountain lions have been virtually exterminated. 
Humans have tried and failed to eradicate coyotes, but they're a relatively ineffective predator of elk. The result is an elk herd which continues to increase each year. We've upset the natural balance and have left ourselves with little choice but to control the herds by hunting. It seems the more we disrupt natural processes, the more we must intervene to compensate. The elk on the refuge have little to fear from either predators or starvation. These playful young bulls have wintered well on the abundant grasses and supplemental feed. By March, the days become warmer and longer. The increasing day length triggers hormonal changes in the bulls, causing them to shed their antlers. Within a few weeks, they will all have lost their headgear. Their new set will take about four months to grow. Each year, after the elk return to their summer range, the local Boy Scouts collect about 6,000 pounds of the shed antlers. Hey guys, look at this. Wow, those are nice ones. We better be getting back. The annual auction is held on the square in downtown Jackson. Well, I'm nine, give me nine, make a nine, go nine, not ten, give me ten, make a ten, now eleven, 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 give me eleven, not twelve, give me 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 twelve, I've got eleven back there, I'll keep you in, I got eleven, how about eleven and a half? Will it be eleven and a half? Make eleven and a half, 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 not twelve, will it be twelve, will it be twelve, will it be twelve, I've got twelve, not twelve and a half. Will it be twelve and a half, will it be twelve and a half, give twelve and a half, make it twelve and a half, twelve and a half, and not thirteen, not any, thirteen, not thirteen and a half, not fourteen. Will it be fourteen, make it fourteen, leave me fourteen, you're out, sir, will it be fourteen, you'll go fourteen, not fourteen and a half. Will it be fourteen and a half, make it a half, give me fourteen and a half, go fourteen and a half, not fifteen, you'll go fifteen, you'll go fifteen, you'll go fifteen, not fifteen and a half, will it be fourteen and a half, will it be fifteen 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 and a
Since we have eliminated most of their predators and altered their range, we have little choice but to manage the growing herds. Yet it seems the more we manage, the less wild our wildlife becomes. We should strive to keep our intrusions to a minimum and let natural processes rule their lives. Humans and elk in Jackson Hole are becoming increasingly dependent on one another. The elk depend on people to feed them during the winter, and people depend on elk to bring money into the economy. Unfortunately, wildlife continues to lose ground as more and more development moves into this beautiful valley. Hopefully, enough wilderness will be preserved to ensure that Jackson Hole will always be the Valley of the Elk. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.